Okay, so I just showed you that the planar could end up in a variety of different places on the court, a bunch of different distances. So the athletes have to make sure that they practice and that they're comfortable rolling the bocce balls at those various distances. So I'm gonna show you guys a simple drill that you'll utilize with your athletes. Generally, um, this will be utilized an athlete can practice with their partner. Um, obviously, if you're an odd person, the coach jumps in and can practice with their athletes as well or can rotate around and practice this with different athletes to kind of check their form and, and check on what they need to work on as far as their, their bocce ball delivery. So a simple drill is this. You'll kind of just line up at approximately the distance that we'll be working with the polina. So in this case, the first thing I showed you is that the polina is legal if it's just past the center line. So again, this is a distance of just a little bit more than 20 feet that, we, that we'll be working. The other thing that I do want to bring on, and this is a major strategy piece and something that you should always remind your athletes is that uh, the saying that we always have is shorter is better than longer. What that basically means is that you always want your bocce ball to be shorter when you roll it than longer to the, as compared to where the target is. Because if you roll it shorter, it actually serves as a block to the polina or to the target of where somebody might want to be throwing their bocce ball. If you throw your polina, sorry, your bocce ball longer than your target, then essentially it's never a factor in how the opponent wants to play. They never have to work around the bocce ball. So you always strategically want to try and roll your bocce ball a little bit short of the target rather than longer than the target. So in this case, the way Walker and I are set up is Walker is going to give me a target. The target basically is I want to kind of roll it right so it stops right in that V shape uh, that he's making with his feet. Um, we don't want to roll it past Walker. And it just basically looks like this. So again, when we're doing this delivery, it's a short delivery. I usually get pretty low. We want the contact to hit the ground pretty early so that the grass kind of slows down the bocce ball. We don't have to have a big arm swing. This is much more of a strategic throw. So I'm here again, I'm facing my target and I'm gonna roll nice and softly right at Walker. All right, hit his foot. We would like it to stop just a little bit short of that, but that's a decent throw. And then basically this is going back and forth. So again, I'm just gonna make a target for Walker. Walker is going to get in bocce ball rolling position, roll it. Again, Walker's a lot stronger than I am, so he rolled it past me. Um, and again, we would like to throw it a little bit short, but that's a good throw as well, not too much past. Now, you can turn this into a game, and the game basically plays like this. The reason you sometimes turn these drills into a game is because drills can get boring, whereas if you turn it into a game, especially if it's competitive, everybody focuses much more on what they're doing. So the way that this game works is that every duo, every pair of folks that are rolling the, the bocce balls back and forth together are a team. So Walker and I, in this case, would be a team. Um, so what happens is if I roll it and if Walker can just bend down and pick up the bocce ball without actually moving his feet, our team would get two points. If he would only have to take one step to pick up the bocce ball, the team would get one point. But if he's got to take two steps or more, it would be zero points. And so we would go for about five minutes and you would have your team see how many points they could get either set a, uh, a time cap on that and whoever gets the most points gets a little prize or gets some recognition or the other option would be you set to who can ever get 10 points first and see how quickly they can, they can do that so then everybody's really focused in so again it would just look like this i'm going to line up roll to walker all right can he bend down and pick it up yep so that would be two points for us and now it's going to come back to me And again, Walker's too stronger than I am, but in this case, I can take one step, and that would be one more point for us. And we would just keep adding it up. And this makes it a little bit competitive. So the next thing we would do after we work on this for about five minutes, our athletes start to get this distance down. Then I am sitting at the foul line, basically, right? So don't have to have the court out. We could utilize cones to designate distance as well. But now I'm going to ask Walker to back up sort of halfway between the white and the green flags. And quite often, a lot of the games are played at this distance, sort of in that middle area between the center line and the far foul line. So this is, we really want to spend some time working on this. Basically, the target and our, uh, our goal here is basically to do the same thing that we just did previously, but now we need to roll a little bit stronger as it's a little further away. So again, see where it lands. All right. You are allowed to move your feet so nobody gets hit, but... Walker's got tough ankles. All right, nice roll. So, and again, you would practice this back and forth at this middle distance and see how everybody's doing, both on accuracy and also distance. So this is really a distance drill, but really a good opportunity, again, to see how the athletes are doing for accuracy as well. Again, things to look out for on accuracy. 
when athletes are doing this drill, if you see them going too far left again, or even too far right, make sure first thing is that they are lined up correctly. So again, the thing that we worked on before, which is making sure that their eyes, their torso, their shoulders, their hips are lined up to the target. You want to make sure that they, when they bring the bocce ball back, it's coming back in a straight direction. You want to see their follow through. So on this drill, every time an athlete or partner rolls, you really want to ask them to hold their follow through. The other thing that this can see is where is their hand position? Is their hand position open or have they turned it? All right, so you wanna see that follow through and that open hand position right at their target. All right. Now, one of the things I wanna talk about as far as the ball delivery is there are correct ways to deliver the bocce ball and incorrect ways to deliver the bocce ball. Some of them is just about strategy, but there's actually some rules that you have to follow when it comes to whether a delivery is a foul or not. Okay, so a couple of things I do want to explain that where a foul might occur on the delivery of the bocce ball. All right, so the first one is, is again, you guys can see where the red flag is on this side. The red flag is on this side. Again, during competition, we will have this striped. Now, if the athlete or partner steps on the line or steps over the line, that will be a foul. In the case of a foul, we actually remove the ball from play, so it won't count. Okay, so even if you roll a great roll, that ball is not going to count. All right? The other thing that you really have to pay attention to when you roll the bocce ball is, first thing is that we... Um, okay. All right. So some of the other things you really want to pay attention to as far as the legality and illegality of how to deliver a bocce ball are the following. So here are where some of the other cases where there could be a foul. A foul would be is if I release the bocce ball above my waist, so that would look something like this. That would be illegal. So you've got to actually release the bocce ball below your waist. And this is partially a safety and partially a control issue as well. The other thing I want to show you is as far as releasing the bocce ball so it goes into the air, what is not legal is you can't roll or deliver a bocce ball where it lands past the center line. So, for example, if I did this, that landed just before. If it would have gone past the center line, it would have been illegal. That was actually close to being legal if I, as long as I kept my hand below my waist. But if my hand comes above my waist on the delivery where I release the ball, that would be illegal. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the overhand grip and underhand grip. So we only teach our folks to use the underhand grip, as we've been talked about all along. So it's basically looking like this. Now, if an athlete's been playing for years and years and years, and you notice they're using an overhand grip, so like if you see some of these movies where they have some of these guys um, that are these old timers playing bocce and they're playing on a hard packed dirt court and they're using this overhand grip where they're trying to get some backspin that's where you might see this okay but we don't ever teach that because it's hard to control it so it would look like this again we don't teach it and also because if you do that quite often the delivery is going to end up being above the waist which would make it illegal okay so if they do it this way and release it below the waist it would be legal but we don't teach it and don't want you to teach that to your athletes we want to do all deliveries with your hand below the ball and in control